integration. So integration is the opposite of differentiation um, because it allows us to find the antiderivative, which is also um, called the primitive function. And so, um, for example, the primitive function of little fx is um, big fx. And so it's essentially going from, um, if we found the derivative, how do we get back to what is the original function? Um, and you'll see integration represented by this symbol. So this sort of squiggly S situation, and then you'd put a function in this box here. Okay, so there are two types of integrals. So you've got the indefinite integral, um, and that gives you the antiderivative and reverses your differentiation process. Um, and then you've got the definite integral. And this will give you, your definite integrals give you area bound by a curve. So we're going to have a bit more of a look at both of these things. So if this is the first time you're thinking about this, don't worry, because we're going to look um, in much more detail at these. So the first thing we have to remember with differentiation is that when you differentiate, your constants become zero. So for example, if we were differentiating like 3x squared plus 2, we would end up with 6x, and that 2 would essentially just disappear. Okay. So essentially what this means in terms of integration is that there are a whole like family of functions that share the same derivative. Okay. So um, for example, 2x is the derivative of x squared, but um, 2x is also the derivative of x squared plus 1, x squared minus 7, x squared plus 2 pi, etc, etc. Okay. So in, in order to account for that difference, in order to account for the fact that you can't um, just, you know, magically guess, you know, what the constant is going to be. Um, when we evaluate an indefinite integral, and the indefinite being the fact that we don't know what the constant is, we need to make sure that we account for the constant, the arbitrary constant with a plus c. So essentially, whenever you're doing integration, so let's say we're integrating 2x, okay, which is here, 2x, um, dx is just what you pop in um, when you're finding integration. So like we're finding the integral um, in relation to the x. So the integral of 2x dx is equal to x squared plus c. Okay, um, don't worry if you don't know how to do the integration yet. This is just an example that the very first thing I want you guys to know about integration is that if you were doing something indefinitely, um, you need to make sure you include plus C. Okay, if I can stress anything to you, do not forget the plus C um, when you're evaluating the indefinite integral because technically your answer is wrong if you don't include it. Um, and depending how things are being marked um, in your school, um, trials, HSC, um, a lot of markers will actually take the mark off you if you don't include the plus C because the answer is wrong. Um, so always make sure you add um, the plus C. So we're going to have a look at the base forms of doing our integration. So similar how we did uh, differentiation before, we looked at the base forms and then the more complicated forms. So what we're looking at here, first of all, is um, the integration version of the power rule. So essentially, if we are integrating x to the power of n, again, dx is just saying that we're integrating in relation to x. What we want to do is we do x to the n plus 1 um, on the top of a fraction, and then we do whatever our n plus 1 is on the bottom, and of course, we plus c. Okay, um, this is where n is not equal to negative 1. Um, super important to remember that. But if your n is equal to negative 1, you end up with 1 over x um, integral to uh, relative to x. And then um, the integral of that just like always is going to be ln to the absolute value of x plus c. So fairly straightforward to remember. Again, these are also all in your formula sheet. So you do not have to worry about remembering them. Just know that they're there and that they exist um, and how to use them as well. Then um, some more basics. Um, the integral of cos x is going to be sine x plus c. The integral of sine x is going to be negative cos x plus c. Integral of sec squared x is tan x plus c. Okay, so you will um, sort of see that this is sort of like your opposites um, of like your differentiation because we're going the other way. Okay, and then we've also got um, integration for exponentials. 
So here we're looking at the integral of e to the um, power of x. Again, e to the x doesn't change when we differentiate it, so e to the x will not change when we integrate it. So the integral of e to the x dx is equal to e to the x plus c. Okay. Of course, we're accounting for the fact that that constant could be whatever. Okay. Even though the e to the x doesn't change, that constant can change, so we still have to put in the plus c. And then we've got our second exponential, um, the integral of a to the x in relation to x is equal to a to the x on top all over ln e plus c. So integration isn't actually too tricky. A lot of people get, um, I think, I don't know, like intimidated by integration. Um, but it actually, it's not too tricky. It's the same as differentiation. You just have to know the rules that are attached to your integration.